Good afternoon everyone, thank you very much for tuning in to my latest video, uh, I really appreciate you joining me. Um, thanks to everyone that continues to subscribe uh, and share the videos, also commenting as well. Uh, one thing I will say, if you, are, uh, if you are a subscriber or you have recently subscribed, um, just be sure to double check um, that the subscription is still there because I'm getting a lot of people that are, that are messaging me to say their subscriptions are getting removed. Um, a friend of mine actually messaged me the other week there to ask if I was... Um, when I'm having a break from YouTube and I'd informed them that I was posting every week. Yeah, his subscription hadn't actually been removed. It was just that the notification bell had changed. Um, so if you do want to keep receiving the videos, just log in and, and, and obviously check because I do try and post at least once every week. Um, I know there's not been a lot of content over the last couple of weeks. That's due to the fact that there's, I've had a really challenging month. It's been a crazy month, um, which I'm hoping to do a video on. Um, I think you'll find it quite interesting because it's related to everything that we talk about on this channel. Um, I'm just waiting for word from a solicitor to make sure there's not going to be any legal ramifications that can come from that or it's not going to hurt the ongoing issue that we've got with regards to this corruption. And um, that's all I can say about it just now. Um, so today's video is, as you can see, um, about Rishi Sunak and his benefit bombs with regards to Sick Note Britain. Now, I initially wanted to do this, this video last week but I just, like I said, just didn't have the time to do it. Um, it's, it's, you've got to pick your battles at the start of the week. Um, and, and it is, it's getting, it is getting very, very busy. Of course it is. It's, I mean, to be fair, like it's, it's at a decent kind of level where I can balance it out. Some days are obviously tougher than others, like, but, um, for the most part, it's okay. Um, but here I am now, and there's obviously a lot I want to talk about with it because, um, the, the man is just living, he's living in dreamland, Rishi Sunak. Um, I, I, I don't even know if you could call it dreamland, I think it's beyond that. Um, the man is so contradictory and so ignorant, I, I've, I couldn't find a decent word to even describe it. Um, the, I mean, he, just, he can just tell, it's that big white smile of his. And those bloody little eyes, you can just tell, just looks like, he looks like vermin. That's because he is vermin. Um, and when you, th when you hear about the th some of the things he's been saying in the news, it only confirms that. Um, I don't like to refer to anyone as vermin, but this man is vermin. Um, he is a rat, there's no doubt about it. And they need chased, all of the rats need chased from that, that bloody Houses of Parliament, because it is jam-packed to the tits with them. Um, so so he's, he's saying that there has, there's going to be a benefit reform uh, with regards to uh, sickness benefits, because he claims that there are record numbers of sick notes being reported, um, which which he says is at 11 million. Now, he agrees there is a genuine mental health crisis here, um, but because there's a rising cost in the sickness benefit, it cannot be sustained. He says it's now at 69 billion, um, which is more than the, the school budget and the transport budget individually, not together. I would like to remind Rishi that the military budget is double them, or is more than them both. Now, I've had a lot of stick for what I've said about the, mil the military budget and the defence budgets. Um, get a lot of people telling me that we need to spend this money on defence, it's ridiculous. I put a comment on a video about that the other week there to say that the sheep require ever more security so they'll quite happily consent to that money being spent while people go hungry, homeless and can't feed their children. There was also a report on the news a couple of weeks ago that 50% of people who are working can't afford to live, they're in poverty. That's Victorian times, that's dystopian, that's a dystopian life that people are living when they're doing that. And now he's, what he's doing, he wants to target the genuinely sick to get them back to work so he can reduce these costs to do what? To give ever more money to his bloody cronies. Um, he says everything's over-medicated, we're, we're over-medicating problems. Well, that's funny, Rishi, because you, sir, have been well known to invest in a hedge fund that invests in drug companies. So... You're contradicting yourself there, mate. Um, I mean, <laughs> when someone says that the country's over-medicated, but they're actually secretly investing in hedge funds, now he will say that, well, I only invest in the hedge fund. I don't get a say in what that hedge fund invests in. 
Of course you don't, but you can still do your due diligence before you invest in the fund to make sure that it's an ethical investment. But these people don't care about ethics because they, 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 they're ethically bankrupt along with being morally bankrupt. Now, the stats say there's not enough, they call it economic activity. Apparently Britain is one of the lowest, it's got the lowest economic activity um, of our counterparts around the world, in the Western world anyway. And uh, that's obviously not good enough. He 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 can't he can't allow that. He's, he has to be um, getting it to the same level as our counterparts because he obviously wants to get re-elected. Now, <laughs> when he says there's there's not enough economic activity and there's too many sick notes, it's it's like what they're saying is, I don't care how sick you are, you're going back to work. It's just so Nazi-esque, it's just unbelievable. And then he, then he came out in the next sentence and said, something has gone, it has gone horribly wrong with mental health since the pandemic. And I did, I nearly fell off my seat when he said that because I thought, well, that was the bloody reason for the lockdowns. Number one, to undermine the mental health of the nation, which is exactly what it done. Because we, were, we weren't afforded community, we weren't allowed to go out or we were allowed to go out for shopping and going out for a walk and people going out for three walks a day just to justify being out the house. We weren't getting enough sunlight, we weren't getting to do our activities, people weren't getting to go to work to have the community with their workmates. Um, they were essentially just sitting in the house, eating, uh, stocking up in junk food and watching mind numbing television. Um, and then he's got the cheek to turn and say something's gone horribly wrong. Well, I've just outlined what's gone wrong, Rishi. But your masters know that that was the reason for it. Because as, as I've said many times on this channel, it's been proven beyond any reasonable doubt that that was nothing more than a scam. The, the evidence is overwhelming. And there is lawyers that work to try and get it into, are trying to get it into court. They're finding it very, very difficult. Because these people, these people have the, right, the game rigged. Um, and because of that, they have unlimited resources, so they can they can keep going. They 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 will never run out of money. Like it just they, people say, what's well, all about money? It's not. They have got all the money they need. It's not about money. It's control now. That's that's what they're after. But the ignorance his statement though is just it's just like and it's not just the ignorance of the statement. It's the it's it's like he's patronising the nation with that as if we're not aware. Uh, what has exactly gone horribly wrong since this pandemic? Many things has gone wrong. Mental health is just one side of it. And basically what he's saying is there's a mental, mental health crisis, but I don't care, you're going back to work. Which is wrong because we have to remember this is the taxpayer's purse. This is the taxpayer's purse. Now, I've also had, I'm going to actually talk in this video as well, about some of the worst calls that I've had while I was a DWP or a Universal Credit Agent. And the reason that I've combined the two is because some of the worst calls I had were with some with, with some people that had some serious mental health problems that had only just come on, and some, not all of them like, but a lot of them that had only just come on over these last couple of years. And the reason I'm going to talk about them towards the end of the video is because these are the people that Rishi is telling to get back to work. And he, and, and, and he says, work always pays. In the same conference, he said, work always pays. Well, no, it doesn't, Rishi. It doesn't always pay. It certainly doesn't always pay when you're getting earnings reported that you haven't actually received, which is obviously a very, very, very big problem. That I am, I mean, I'm getting a lot of emails even still about that. Um, people getting earnings reported their earnings being wrong. And that's not paying people to work, is it? Because what you're doing is, you're going out, you're doing your hours, you're getting your universal credit payment, but they're marking more hours down that you've actually done, thus reducing your universal credit payment. Then when you leave the journal messages to say it's wrong, they come back with a load of bloody jargon to tell you, oh, this is correct, or this is correct, or that's the way it is, because they don't want to give this money back because they don't have it, because they've stolen it. Now, to say that work always pays is just, it's, it's, it's the biggest load of bullshit I've ever heard. Even for people that get the correct earnings reported, it doesn't pay. Because what happens is, 
Right, if you've got a standard allowance of £368 a month, and then you and, and say, like, even if you were to get a job that was cash in hand um, by someone that was maybe going to pay you £80, um, they will just deduct that £80 straight off you. But there's times where I remember once where I, I was in a job, I was making £14 an hour, and because of that, I wasn't entitled to any universal credit for the next few months. But then, a few years after that, I'd done a few small contracts, and even though I'd done one week's work, I still got a universal credit payment of £200. But even that's changed, because that was in 2021, um, or 2020, I can't remember. And even that's changed, because that doesn't seem to be the way, because if you go out and you say, like, say it's £368, and you make £80 for the day, then you're, you're, um, you're deducting, well, what is it? you'll get a payment of about £288. I think that's what it is. Yeah. And that just gets deducted straight off. So what that does is, that's got a cause and effect because, yes, you'll get people that will say, well, I like to get out of the house and it helps with my mental health, which it obviously does, especially when you're working. But it's not going to help your mental health if you're just going out, getting that, or getting that £80 for your seven hours or whatever it is, coming back, reporting it, and they immediately deduct it off your, 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 your payment. Because most, the vast majority of people, or people that's smart anyway, are going to say, well, why do I need to go out and put that seven hours in? Because you're going to give me the money anyway. So I, whether I put these seven hours in or whether I don't, you are going to give me the money. If I put the seven, if I put the seven hours in rather, you're not going to give me the money. But I'm not going to be any better off. So what that allows them to do is it justifies it to say, well, there's no point doing it. Because I'm going out and expending time that I'm never going to get back for a payment that I'll receive anyway, even before doing the hours, whether I did the hours or not. So what, the, what that then does is it's like, well, what's the point? It has to be worth it. Um, I mean, it'll even, even some people will say they'll, they'll knock back a week's work simply because they'll say, well, I'll, make, I'll only make about £400 for that, roughly £430 at which point I'll lose my universal credit. So that means I'll have to go and do a month's work for money I would have received anyway. So, it just doesn't make any sense from why they do that. And then they talk about how, why these SIP notes are being actually being reported. Now, this is what happens. 11 million SIP notes are being reported, which is record numbers apparently, right? And they were talking about how about mental health. Now I've had this conversation thousands of times with people that were thinking about taking jobs. And what happens is, right, you, we are in a cost of living crisis. It's been engineered, but it's a crisis nonetheless. So everything's more expensive. And that's another thing Rishi said, you're getting more for your money, you're not, it's a lie. Everything's more expensive. Now, someone says, right, I'm gonna do for my mental health, I'm gonna do my mental health a favor and I'm going to find a job. They go and get a job, say it's £12 an hour, and are working in a factory that's very monotonous. Let's say they do a couple of months, and after that couple of months, they start to sort of, because everyone's the same. Once you learn a job, the fun's kind of taken out of it. It becomes very monotonous. And it's at that point the boredom starts to set in, certainly with myself. But you look at it like this. If you're working in a factory, and you're working, say, for £12 an hour, and you end up, paying your own rent, your own council tax, all that stuff, all the expenses, because kids ask for more when you're working more, obviously, because you're working, and then you want to do more for your kids, fine. After a couple of months, you could then do a little summary and say, well, actually, I'm very, very tired here, and I'm not quite getting what I was getting while I was on benefits with the kids. So because of that, that burns you out because you're not getting a fair return for the energy that you've expended. That is what causes the mental health problems. So what they need to do is, and I hope you hear this, Rishi, you're probably not, but this is what needs to happen. It cannot be the same, claiming benefits and working at the bloody moment. It is for a lot of people. I know it's not for me, it's not, because I'm a single man, but for someone that's got kids, certainly a, a, a couple, it is easier for them to manage their lifestyles and their kids to live off the state rather than go and get a job at £12 an hour or whatever it is or minimum wage 
that only just covers the basics with very, very little left over for any extra provisions. That is going to cause absolute chaos. Because what it does is, it puts more pressure on the parents because they're out working, they need to rush their lives more. They're rushing their lives more and they're not getting anything else for it. So they start to think, well actually I wasn't doing this in benefits, it wasn't like this in benefits. Yes, we had to manage our money but the time was ours and we had the time to manage and we could do everything in time and, and get everything done and we were happy at night time and they'd felt like they were getting a fair return even though it's only just state benefits. At least you're not having to go out and put 40 and 50 hours in and then deal with your family on top of that. So what they need to do is they need to make it worthwhile for people that are willing to do that. And at the moment, they are not. And that is the problem. That is why so many bloody people are reporting sick notes. And the sanctions to Russia's got a lot, a lot to do with this because fuel, fuel obviously makes this world turn. I know the world t on its own turns all itself, but the commodities of the world, it, to move them around, it takes fuel. So these sanctions to Russia had an effect on everything, absolutely everything. And I'm not saying businesses shouldn't put costs up, but some of them are taking the piss with it. But the minute they put those sanctions on Russia, that is how war starts. Um, it's how poverty starts as well, because it then we can't buy that oil from them now, or that fuel. So they need to sell elsewhere, at which point, it, it obviously, it, it makes the, the fuel more expensive. Now, the fuel companies are making absolute fortunes out of this, and it all came from a sanction on Russia. Because when they manipulated Zelensky onto the into the presidency at, at Ukraine, that was that was the beginning of this. That's why they done it. And go look at I've mentioned it before. Go look at Joe Biden and his son and what they got up to uh, in Ukraine a few years ago. They're, they're total criminals. But this is this is this is a product of that. And because fuel moves moves all commodities, it then makes everything more expensive because everything has to be delivered. Whether it comes across in a boat and it gets to the depot, it then gets moved to another depot and then it gets put in lorries and then it gets delivered to the locations. That all takes fuel. The dearer that fuel is, the dearer the product. They know that. They knew this. That is not a bloody accident. And that's something that's going to have to be sorted out. And these people that say, they talk about, um, they talk about Vladimir Putin being a saviour as well. I mean, that chills me to the bone when people say that. I would not trust that man as far as I could throw him. Yes, it might appear that he's a little bit more benevolent to his people, but I don't. I know some people say that, but unless you're actually in Russia, how can you say that? I mean, I know the Russians, they don't seem to have too many problems. I see, I watch a couple of them on YouTube, but even still, I mean, questions have to be asked here because it's a grand chessboard, and even though it appears on the face of it that these people are at loggerheads, you often find they're doing anything but behind the scenes. And that's, that's what's been going on for a long, long time. A very, very long time. It's smoke and mirrors. Believe none of what you see and half of what you hear, as they say. Um, anyway, Rishi Sunak, sorry, I got off, I got off a little bit there. Rishi Sunak in the same press conference had said he was going to be increasing, increasing minimum wage every year, which will end low pay, he says. Well, not if inflation keeps rising the way it is and these bloody businesses, as discussed in one of my last videos, keep taking the piss out of it, because they are, they are, there's no doubt about it. I've got absolutely no doubt in my mind. Um, I'm going to say it one more time. You should not be reporting record profits if you've only put your prices up to cover these extra costs of fuel, because that is what the vast majority of them said. It's nonsense. They're taking advantage of it, because that, again, that's what business people do. An accountant is paid to make sure the books are balanced. If a, an accountant says to a business owner, look, you could get away with just putting this up 10% or 20% with that, that and that, that will cover this. And you can say it's the cost of living and no one's batting an eyelid about it. Boom, it's happening every day. I don't care what Andy says. And another, another uh, effect of it, they're not only putting extra prices onto the products, but they're, like I bought some sponges the other day there. And I used to buy them every other day because I'm, I used them a couple of times and throw them away. But they're like half the size, if that now, for the same price. So they're actually charging you double. And they're the same price, they just half them in size. 
It's just, it's just taking the piss, that's all it is. But see, the thing is, if everything kind of sorts itself out and the sanctions were to get lifted off Russia and they could start supplying fuel again, would these businesses start bringing these costs down? Of course they wouldn't. It, it's just not, they just wouldn't do that because the accountants would tell them not to. I'm not saying every single business owner would follow that, but the vast majority of them would keep it because it would benefit them. He also said that it is absolutely fundamental to government that we make work pay. I mean, it's just, honestly, like, this man, the lies that comes out this man's bloody mouth, it was making, I was feeling sick the other day that I was hungry at the time, so I don't know if it was because of that, it might have been, but I was, it was, I was feeling sick when I was listening to this man. It's abs. <laughs> It's, and this was the word he used. It is absolutely fundamental to government that we make work pay. That is a that's quoted. That's, that's a quote. Well, mate, you're going to have to show me some evidence of that because I've not seen it yet. And I worked in your system for one year. And from what I could tell, the only people that were really comfortable were the people that usually had sickness benefits. See, this is the problem with it. These sickness benefits that he's talking about, if you can get onto full PIP, LCWRA, between that, the LCWRA, the PIP, um, your housing benefit, and your standard allowance, you're, 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 you're clawing in a, a working wage for that. See, all those payments would add up to what the, the average working person is usually earning in a month. And that's the problem with it. And I'm not saying there's not people out there that are trying to take the Michael out of this benefit system. Of course there is. And I know, I know people in my own life that's tried to do it, that's done it. I can say that now because they're not here anymore and they've passed away. But uh, they did do it and it's, it was all based on nonsense. It really was. And it, they were getting a working living wage out of it. And you could see, you could visibly see people getting annoyed with how much money they were getting because they were getting a, lot, a working living wage and... They weren't doing anything for it. It was just because they had these sickness benefits. And that, that relates directly to what I said in the bloody first video. This is about becoming a better person. And a good person wouldn't do that. They wouldn't claim sickness benefits that they didn't need to claim. But many people do do it. And this is, I've said it many times before, this is bloody why. This is why. There's, um, there's so many people going on to sickness benefits and trying to get it. It's why immigration is, is such a high problem because they know that not only will they get their standard allowance and their housing paid along with what to, to their children, that they can say that, well, I've actually got, I've actually got an illness uh, and I need a work capability assessment. And I'm going to reiterate this. I don't think any person that's seeking asylum here should be allowed to complain, to, com to claim any sickness benefits, I'm sorry, whether you're sick or not. I don't think you should be able to do that in this country um, unless you've been here at least two or three years and uh, obviously the injury would have to have been in this country. I don't see why people can come from other countries just to claim a sickness benefit and then we need to respect their human rights. Well, who's respecting our human rights? Could someone please tell me what country that I can go to to get my sickness benefits? There is none. To go to America, I think you need to have 50 grand in your bank just to show that you can support yourself. We need something like that. We need something like that. We can't go to Spain or Italy or anything like that and claim benefits. But we're not like, what's, why, so why do we need to give them? I don't understand that. And this immigration is, I'm going to do a video again on its own, like, but it's, that is, it's just, it's like a tinder just waiting for a spark island at the minute. It really is. It's ready to blow. And no wonder, and then they're obviously backing and throwing where Rishi's, Rishi's trying to send them back to Ireland. They've performed a manoeuvre to get them back here. And I mean, the immigrants in, in the meantime are getting shipped for shore to shore. I mean, if that was me, I'd be like, well, I'm not wanted in either of these shores. It's time to head back to where I came from, because let's face it, if it's not in, if it's not war torn, it couldn't have been that bad. It couldn't have been that bad. It's just because the cost of living's got so bloody expensive, and they think, well, it's easier over there. Of course, it's easier. They play pay for having bloody kids. <coughs> so that's another thing he said. In the period since the pandemic, something has gone wrong. He says, I mean, I, can, I honestly couldn't believe he said that. 
and he was alluding to the fact that they they economically inactive. And I've spoke about this in the channel before. People are economically inactive, Rishi, because they took an apparent cure, which was still under trial, which all previous um, systems were systems of work were thrown out with regards to policing the creation of these cures. They used to have scores of police, or it wasn't actual policemen, but policemen within the bio factories to make sure that safety procedures were being followed. They weren't. All that, all that was thrown out. All those people were gone, and they could do what they wanted. AstraZeneca have just admitted that it's 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 causing injury. They've also had to give compensation um, to someone for a brain injury they received from it. So the the asses fell out there. It really has, and that's the reason why people are economically inactive, Rishi, because they they followed the advice of your bloody colleagues. Um, because they thought they had their best interests at heart, but they didn't. Now, what you want to do is, you want to then take those people and tell them to get back to work, even though it was your colleagues that advised them to get the bloody cure in the first place. When people like me were out there banging our head off walls, trying to tell people, don't, I'm not telling you what, no, I'm telling you, I'm not telling you what to do, I'm telling you what not to do. And that's go out and get a bloody cure, but you don't know what's in it. People out wearing masks that, that, that damaged their health, but they were claiming it was um, to protect other people, which was absolutely impossible because it couldn't uh, it couldn't hold in viral particles. It was impossible it would do that. And people were saying to me, "Oh, I was only doing it because um, I was trying to I was trying to protect others." No, you were only doing it. You were doing it for yourself because that's what was easiest for you. Um, it was nothing to do with protecting others, and that's fine. Just don't come up to me and say you were only doing it to protect others. That's, that wasn't the case. But these are all factors in why these sick notes have bloody increased. Of course it is. The mental health problems as well. I mean, to, uh, with the work, uh, going back to work, I mean, I'm going back to work soon, like, but I'm just on my own. I've got my cell to look for, but that's fine. I mean, it must be so daunting for families to go back to work in this. That's if they can, that's if they've not been damaged by the, the apparent cure. It's only if they've not been damaged by the apparent cure. But yet, is he going to be telling these people? Well, it doesn't really matter about that. You need to go back to work. So at all costs, we must reduce economic or uh, reduce economic activity or get people back to work so there isn't economic activity isn't as high. And he says that 850,000 people have been added to the group uh, since the pandemic. So that's 850,000. That's the best part of a million people, ladies and gentlemen. A million people nearly that's been added to this. And yes, there will be a percentage of them that's playing the game. Of course there is. But there'll be a very high percentage that are not. And that is what we need to remember. That's the, I mean, it's true. Like You need to be your own doctor, your own, your own priest, your own scientist, your own fitness instructor, your own philosopher. You, you have to, like, because... You, the only person you can really trust yourself. Some people can't even do that. Yeah. 850,000 people have been added to it. Yeah, we all know why that is, Rishi, don't we? Because of the apparent cure. Well, it's not just that. You can't blame it just on that. Like, it's definitely not just that. Um, but I've, I've spoke to loads of able-bodied people that were high in energy. And you could tell they weren't interested in going to work. And they didn't want to go to the job centre. I've explained all this before, but it's important to reiterate it. You can tell when people are asked to go to verify bank details, they say, well, I don't need to go to the job centre. Well, you do to do this. I'm LCWRA. And that's the thing. I've spoke to many people at LCWRA that will go and verify their bank details, no problem, because it's not about getting out of the job centre. And I used to say that to people, that's what gave them away. Yeah, and if you do need any information on that as well with regards to the pandemic and why this has been added, I've got a video that's titled Lockdowns, Lies and Apparent Cures. You might find it um, quite interesting. So, apparently half this number have depression and anxiety. Well, I'm, I wouldn't doubt that either, like, um, because no wonder. It's just... Every single day you switch the, the, the bloody telly on, as I said in my World War Three video, it would appear that it's here. Um, and that's our big, big reason for anxiety and depression. Um, 
but see, this is the thing as well. There's, there, I mean, there's another aspect to that because people have to, and, and this is one of the reasons for the channel, there wouldn't be nowhere near as much stress and anxiety if people would get their minds right and get their head in the game and start finding out what this world is, who it's run by, and to what end, and ultimately who you really are and why you're here. Because when we, are, when we start to find that stuff out, the answers come out of it. I can't say it enough. I can't say it enough. No one was in a bigger hole than me. I've said this many times. I'm not trying to trivialise anyone's situations, but I was in a serious hole and it did not look like I was going to be getting out of it any time soon. I needed a miracle. And I knew I needed a miracle and it just so happened I got one. Because you are a miracle. So you can make miracles happen. It's as simple as that. I'm living proof of it. I might not be at the level of Batman quite yet, or Superman, but I'd like to think I'll get there. I mean, all joking aside, you can, you can, um, you can become a new person, you can build your strength, there's no doubt about it. And sitting down hoping for good news to come out of those bloody things, pointing at the TV, you're in for a disappointment, like, because you're not going to get good news out of that. It's not, that's not what it's for. The news channels are not about good news. It's so depressing. I can barely watch them now. I'm glad for YouTube because you can just kind of, you can kind of just flick through them and watch kind of a few minutes here and that um, so that you don't need to listen to other nonsense. Whereas back in the day, you used to have to watch the whole hour loop to see what they were saying or to see what nonsense they were coming out with. Yeah, and as I said at the start of the video, Sunaki says, we're at risk of over medicating the situation uh, that's the everyday no what he, he, that his exact quote was we are at risk of over medicating the everyday challenges of life well as I said earlier on he's linked to a hedge fund that invests in drug companies so he's making money from that whether he knows it or not and then you had Patrick Christie on GB News with their bloody nonsense as well coming out about how uh, sick note Britain I've done a video on that before about what he said um, <laughs> they're, they're jumping right on it now I mean that man's just as ignorant as Richie Sunak he must be like I just don't trust him I don't trust him I think his eyes tell me a lot about him and I think he knows exactly what's going on which means he's sitting blindly lying on his panel every day Um I mean, I tried to comment on that last video I'd done about this stuff to say, well, for people to watch my video, and the GB News team kept removing it, like, um, because they didn't want people to see that. So that tells me they can't be trusted. And as I said earlier, I mean, minimum wage isn't enough, so it doesn't pay to work. It just doesn't. It doesn't. It pays. The be I think the best people, certainly for single mums anyway, a lot of they, they can hope for is to get a kind of part-time job and get the top up. Because it is a good system for people. If the system runs correctly and they get the right numbers reported, fine. But that's not what's happening at the moment. I mean, it is a good system for some people, as I've said. But ever more so, it's just not working. Um, I actually got a communication from someone. It was another... Well, it was an ex-colleague, I didn't know him at the time, like, but... He was basically saying that there's been a small process change recently um, to the communication tool that we use to send to the case managers, which has caused a lot of people to complain because they've not been hearing back from their case managers as, as much as they'd like. So, and they also said that uh, claim reviews have been increased again as well. So there's ever more claim reviews coming through, which means every time every time they put that on a claim or on an account. That's it, the payment's prohibited until it's taken off there again. So they can sanction people whenever they want through this bloody system. This is the problem with it, and I just feel like I'm banging my head against a brick wall. I have emailed that Mel Stride last week, and I'm, I mean, I've not heard anything. I got the uh, the automatic reply, like, but I didn't, I've not heard back from yet, like, and I don't think I'm going to, so I'll probably have to keep sending him one every week until he does respond, because he claims to be a crusader to protect the public person. I'm sorry, like, but if you don't re respond to that email, that's a blatant lie. And I would tell him that to his face while I looked in his eyes. And as I said at the start, you don't get a fair return for the energy expended. And he, they, and herein lies the problem, ladies and gentlemen. Start giving people a fair return. Make it worth it to go out to work. Try and do something about lifting sanctions from countries that supply fuel. Wake up. 
come together and this bloody world will change. There's no doubt about it. I mean, I'm seeing changes anyway. That I, I, people say, how can you see that? It's getting worse. Well, it was always going to. It was always going to because these psychopaths are never going to give it up easy. Never going to give it on easy. And just before I move on to the worst calls that I've had, that is what has to happen. Don't make minimum wage and sickness benefits the same. Because if minimum wage and sickness benefits are equal, then the vast majority of people within an unfair system are going to opt for the sickness benefits, not the minimum wage. And that's the problem. And the reason I actually wanted... Uh, this is why I wanted to speak about these calls, some of these calls. I mean, because... I've, I've spoken to some vulnerable people, as you can imagine, working in the Universal Credit Helpline. And I, and I couldn't, I, when he said that, that he, was, he was getting everyone back to work, I thought, there's just no bloody way you're going to be able to tell some of these people to get back to work. And, <laughs> I mean, people are genuinely suicidal. There was one guy, I think I mentioned it on my podcast with Jamie at Hawaii Five, uh, Jordan at Hawaii Five O, where, um, and it was one, of, it was one of the worst calls I had because when I looked at the guy's account, you could see he was vulnerable and he would had attempts, and I thought, geez, oh, and all he asked me was, "Is my money available?" At which point I said no because I couldn't lie to him. And you could just tell by his tone of voice that he wasn't playing around. And he just went, right, that's it. And he terminated the call. And I was like, it was like something that I felt like, please don't terminate the call. And he terminated. And what you have to do is you have to obviously run straight to the services um, to get in contact with them so they can then get his property to hopefully help him. But he'd taken all the necessary precautions so that we couldn't get in contact with him. And I mean, I hope I'm wrong, obviously, but... I genuinely don't believe that guy's here anymore and it was down to the fact that he wasn't getting any help and you could probably say that that was quite early on in my tenure there. Um, I think it might have been when the, when my thinking turned on it to say, well, I'm probably going to have to go forward with this because this man, the reason that this man is saying this is because he's not getting the service that he's supposed to be getting and it's just people passing the buck and not wanting to do their bloody job. And then there's another one as well. I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but I'll, 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 I'll mention it again. There was a guy who was trying to change his phone number for one year. And he hadn't, I mean, he, I don't think, he said he'd barely ate for the year, like. And I'd asked him, I says, well, how, how are you getting by? And he says, well, I'm not. And he broke down in tears. And the first couple of times that happens when you're not trained for it, it's, it's very difficult to deal with. Because here you've got a grown man at the other end of the phone breaking down at you. Um, it tend it happened with me a lot. Like I'm not saying it doesn't happen a lot with others, but um, there was a lot of the times where I'd like to think that they were in a safe pair of hands with me. It's like they, when they were talking to me, they knew they could be honest, so it was almost like they would let it out. And then there was a guy <laughs> who was living with his mum who had died, and I don't believe he's here anymore either. And he must have, I think he had some kind of throat cancer or something like that, and he could hardly talk. And um, I shed a tear after this call, I really did. It was, it was horrible, I had to go and have a minute to myself. And um, I'll, I'll never forget this guy, like, because you could just tell he was such a nice guy, and it was, it was heartbreaking, it really was. And he could hardly talk. <clears throat> and like I say, his mum just died, and they obviously had an arrangement where it, it helped them through. They obviously helped each other with things, bills, etc. And I'll never forget what he said to me. He said, I'm hungry, Alan. I've not had any food. I think it was like three days. He said, I've got no gas central heating and I've only got 70 pence left in the meter. Um, <clears throat> and I have to tell him like that I, I, can't, I can't do anything for you. He's phoning me up. He's got through to me because he thinks that I can provide him with some kind of assistance to at least get him some food and maybe a wee bit of electricity and a wee bit of gas central heating. And I have to tell this man, and like I had to tell him, <coughs> I can't help you, mate. I, I wish I could. I genuinely wish I could. Um, but I can't. All I can do is give you this phone number. 
And then we, this is this is the thing about it as well. We give that phone number and then they, they, they move on. They go and phone the phone number and we move on to the next caller. And that's it. We don't know what happens after that. It's so heartless, it's unreal. And I, and I won't forget, I think about that man quite often, like thinking, I wonder, I hope he is still here, but I don't think he is. There's just no way, not in that condition. He was just, there was, he was going downhill rapidly. He really was. But these are the types of vulnerable people that we've got in our society, and these are the people that Rishi Sunak's aiming this at. I mean, this guy was still working age, but he didn't, he sounded a lot older, like, he sounded a lot older because his mum was 73 or 74 and she just died. So he was, he was still working age, like, um, and that's, that's what society had done with him. It had completely and utterly worn him down. Because you've got to remember everyone, um, not everyone's like me or like you or up for confrontation that want to question things. Not everyone's got that within them. They, some people do need help. I mean, I, I used to wake up, I used to go to bed early for it. It's, people used to say to me, I'm a good lawyer. Because I like, I'm argumentative, because I fight corner. And then, um, this, the, it's just, this is why I've done it. Obviously, I've said this many times, because these people do need help now. I don't know what effects this had. It's, I know it's helped some people, but unless it changes things, what, what, what's been the point of it? <clears throat> it needs to change things. And all I can do is to keep going and try and do that and send out the emails etc etc now another bad caller that I had this is actually one of the reasons why I wanted to add this in because there was a there was a girl and she had learning difficulties and she just got all diagnosed and got all her things she was waiting payments and stuff and um, she was so vulnerable she, 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 she not anytime she had to make calls to Universal Credit she needed her support worker there for her to act on her behalf because she couldn't do it because she was so she's probably one of the most vulnerable people I've ever I've ever spoken to and I felt so privileged because that when I first started speaking to her representative or support worker and was talking to her the girl had decided that she wanted to take the call on herself I was like, wow, and this doesn't happen often, she wants to do it. And I felt so grateful, I felt so privileged, I thought this person doesn't do this, but she wants to me to do the call with me. And I thought, that's brilliant, that, and I was so happy. And um, she everything went great, she gave me her name, postcode, all that stuff, all security, it all went great. And I couldn't quite hear what she'd said in her second name, and all I did was ask her, if her, if, a, if if there was a G in her spe in her second name, and I'm I'm I, would ju I just was not prepared for what came next. This lady completely and utterly broke down and started crying. I mean crying, and uh, again I had to take ten minutes after it, like because it was it was I was so happy because I thought this person. It feels comfortable with me. I must be doing this job well here, like because if this person needs her representative to act on her behalf, and yet she's just asked me, to, 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 or she's willing to do it with me on 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 her own. I mean, I, I was really I felt really privileged, as I said. But to go from that from that heightened emotion to the emotion that I felt after that happened was a it was a roller coaster that I had never experienced before. And this person was, she was. I mean absolutely crying the bit down and all I did was ask her if I'd spelled her name correctly so these are the types of vulnerable people that are out there and these are the people Rishi Sunak's talking about I'm not saying this person was on a sick note because she probably wasn't because she got everything diagnosed but that person if that person seen Rishi Sunak speaking on the news about oh sick note Britain we need to get the sick back to work that person would have would have broke down at hearing that because the reason she broke down, because she thought she'd done something wrong, was I didn't realise that at the time, it wasn't until after the call and I had 10 minutes to myself, because she were doing so well. And I've asked her for the spelling, so she's perceived it in her mind that she'd done something wrong and she couldn't cope. So I know there's vulnerable people out there, because I've spoken to them. And then you speak to people that have been... That have, you need to fill out what's called an NCC1. It's when someone's been raped and there's a child comes from it. I've only ever done a couple of them and they're absolutely horrific. It is horrific. Because the people 
I know they say abortion's bad and all that, but I've often thought, well, what if you've been raped and you get pregnant and then the child, the child comes off? Of course, it's your child when you love it, but there's always that reminder there. And how do you have that conversation with a child? And, uh, yeah, your dad's a rapist. I'm, I, I'm different. I must be different, like, but I believe in that instance. If someone should want to get an abortion, they should, and it shouldn't be held against them. But there was one in particular of these that I'd done, and it was, it was a woman... I can't go into too much detail, I've mentioned this before, and I'm not going to go into too much detail, but she had suffered something similar, it wasn't exactly that. But she lived in a, and I can't say where she lived because she would be able to identify herself, but she lived in a very, very posh place. And I can remember speaking to her at the time, and she was the one that had said that she hadn't slept for months, but she would sleep tonight after speaking to me. And she would have been in a, I remember speaking to her and I thought, Christ, if I seen you out my, my window or something like that, I would probably think that you had a great life and you were rich and all the rest of it, because there was a rich background. But what that woman was going through was just absolutely horrific. And her husband had a very high-end job as well. I can't say what it is, because again, she would be able to identify herself. But that it's absolutely horrific. And this person was traumatised, like, I mean traumatised, and she was on sick notes. And no wonder she was traumatised because some of the descriptions that she'd given me just for her and her children was, I can't go into it because she'll be able to, and it's, I don't want to anyway, but it was just absolutely horrific and she was on a sick note. So is she going to be asked to go back to work despite what had she gone through? And I can tell you now, I, I wouldn't, even if I could say it, I wouldn't because I don't want to taste the words again. I don't want, I wouldn't want to taste the words. It's absolutely horrific. Absolutely. I've not even told any of my family members about it because it's, it's it was so horrific. And then you speak to people that are, there was one girl in London one day and she was in a one bedroom flat and she had, um, she, she was under shared accommodation which meant she couldn't get as, as much rent as she, was, she, she, as she should have been getting and I told her this, she's like well my case manager said not, that I'm not entitled to that, she's like but you are, you're in a one bedroom flat. The problem she had was because she was, lit, I think her energy was costing £220 a month. But her, her universal credit payment was only 190. So she, she so, so by the time she paid her energy, she was still in debt. She didn't have anything for anything else, and she was broken. I just some people sometimes you just don't know what to say. What can you say? There's been times where I asked my manager, I've spoken, I've spoken what a lot about, if I could send there was somebody that needed money one day because she um, needed to take her medication and she couldn't, she didn't have any food. So I asked if she had PayPal. Because I was going to send her the money for it. Because I thought it was twenty pound to get to get us so she can take her medication. Someone in Britain in two thousand twenty three shouldn't be making that choice or need to make that choice to go and shoplift to take medication. I wasn't allowed to do it, so there was no point asking again. And I, I would get into trouble. I'd get into trouble like if they'd listened to that and I'd sent it to them or asked for any details, which I did do. They never got back to me. Like, um, but this is the types of this is this is the system we're in, and this is what's happening. And that lady that I just spoke about there, the one that was in shared accommodation, she um she shouldn't have been she shouldn't have been in that situation, but she wasn't been given the correct information from her case managers. And um when I told her this, what she was entitled to, she was obviously angry. Um you could hear her you could hear it in her voice. I'm not saying you shouldn't have been. And then this is probably the one this is I'll often call this the worst hour and 40 minutes of the whole time I was there because obviously everything's done in blocks so that's how I knew it was 140 minutes because it was three calls and the block was hundred an hour and 40 minutes at which point I had a break after it that's how I can remember this and um, in that in that three times in the three times in fact the guy who had 70 pence left in his meter he was one of them uh, living with his mum and then there was a guy I'd spoken to from Liverpool who for the first few minutes of the call, was just like any normal guy having a decent conversation, as you always do from people from Liverpool. Um, and then just out of the nowhere, he just started coming out with all this really dark stuff. And I was kind of taken aback, and I'm thinking, what's going on here? Like, is this guy joking with me or something? And then he, he, he burst out crying, like. He was, he was crying. And I said, what's wrong, sir? And he said, I'm, I'm very, very sorry I put you through that. Like, he says, I've got psychosis. He says, just, it's the worst things that come out of me. I can't stop it. I'm very, very sorry. And he kept crying. And I was, I'll never forget this guy, man. I was so, I felt so sorry for him. Like, it was just, it was sounding like such a lovely guy. 
he was brilliant and like I say, sitting talking to him, it was just normal. It was just normal. And then it just take a turn like that. And it's, people would say, well, you sure he was being true? I'm telling you, this guy, if he wasn't being truthful, he deserves an Oscar. But some, I, I'm not going to get into what he was saying, it's very, very dark. Um, but it, it, this is what, this is, these are the types of people that are on these, these bloody sick notes. Because they're waiting to get their health journeys, which are taking even longer because that many immigrants are coming in and requesting work capability assessments. So these people that are in these situations that have lived in Britain their whole bloody lives are sitting back waiting on sitting back on sit notes, waiting for their benefits while they're going through these health conditions. And Rishi Sunak saying we need to get people uh, the economic activity up or whatever way they look at it. So that's just a couple. Of how, I mean, if there's more there, like, but it's mainly just about ones that were on fit notes. In fact, they'll say one more with regards to, and I'm not saying all immigra Im immigrants look at it this way, but this lady certainly did. The lady was in London, and she was Lithuanian, and she was getting quite a good payment. I won't go into what it was, but it was a good payment. Sickness benefits, rent, kids, all the rest of it. And she was earning a wage, and she wasn't a very pleasant person. She um, called me up to say that she didn't think that the government was paying her enough. And she was very, very nasty to me. She seen me as the government. Um, and she, I, honestly, like, y you would need to hear this call to believe it. How nasty she was. And how her sense of entitlement, how she was like little, 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 little Miss Muck, who everything should go my way, this is not enough. And she actually said these words, I've lived on this 2,000 a month for long enough, two to whatever it was. I think this should be increased. Where can I do this? And this country is absolutely despicable and da, da, da. And I said, where is it you're from, dear? And she said, Lithuania. I was like, okay. I said, what, what are the sickness benefits like there? And she said, well, we haven't got any, that's why I'm here. And with that, that's not to say all immigrants are like that, but that is certainly how some of them perceive it. And you do, I've spoken to loads of people that, that were like that, that were just here for benefits and nothing more. Um, you would like, you would hear them people like just, that had just come into the country or going and waking up their family members at one o'clock in the afternoon for their phone appointment and stuff like that. And I used to, I used to, I used to think, Christ, even when I'm not working, I mean, I used to obviously was a drug addict, you're in a bed at that time, but when you're living, when you're functioning, the idea of me sleeping at nine o'clock now is just, it's just unthinkable. In fact, if I slept at nine o'clock, I'd feel guilty. Even on a Saturday, if I sleep the half, I feel guilty now, which I'm actually gra I'm grateful for that. Like, But some of these people, they, they see this as a holiday, this place. And um, I'm sorry, I'm veering off here a little bit. This is actually for the next video, because I do want to talk about the Arwanda plan. I'll, I'll keep that for a video on its own. On its own. Um, I just again, I'd like to thank you for uh, watching my latest video and again, if you do subscribe, just make sure you've hit the bell and just check it again that they've not removed you because 17,900 subscribers, it was up to 17,980, it's now back to 15. Like I say, I've seen as much as 27, 30 bloody subscribers getting removed at one time and that's not to say, I'm, I mean, I think you'd be a fail to believe that no one was unsubscribing from you. I mean, you can't please everyone, but I'm not buying that. 27 people do it at exactly the same time on a Tuesday afternoon. It just it just doesn't happen. Or maybe it does, I don't know. Anyway, thank you very much for joining me on this latest video. Um, I'll catch you on the next one. I'll try and get some lives out very, very soon. They are, I'll, I'll get one, hopefully. I don't know if it'll be this week, but it should be next week. Um, thank you very much and enjoy the rest of your day and I'll see you on the next one. You take care.